On June 1, the Boston Urban Forum successfully held its June Forum at Boston City Hall, with the theme World Environment Day, Sustainable Energy in Cities and Communities. The forum aimed to promote sustainable development in cities and communities, foster community integration and development, and establish a more diverse and inclusive environment. The forum was hosted by Professor Yi Jing, co-founder of the Boston Urban Forum, a tenured professor in the Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering at Northeastern University, and founder of Planck Energies. Professor Jing specializes in clean energy materials and carbon-neutral technologies and holds numerous invention patents. The forum's guest speakers included Professor Ravi Ramamurthy, Distinguished Professor of International Business and Strategy at Northeastern University and Founding Director of the Center for Emerging Markets, Alentz Chen, Lecturer in Architecture at Harvard University's Graduate School of Design and Postdoctoral Fellow at the Harvard Center for Green Buildings and Cities, Meg Howard, Program Director at the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, MassCEC, and Andrew Caratanuto, CEO of Planck Energies. During the event, Dr. Zheng emphasized the importance of the forum in his opening remarks. He stressed that we can learn from the experiences of developing countries and apply these successful practices to other developing regions. Alentz Chen shared her architectural perspectives. In building design, we can use passive design strategies, such as reducing heat loss and proper shading, to improve energy efficiency. We can also achieve intelligent and sustainable building systems by integrating advanced machine learning technologies. During interviews, the guests expressed excitement about being invited to the forum and generously shared their insights on advancing sustainable energy in Boston and worldwide. Addressing how to improve the efficiency of household heating systems during Boston's harsh winters, Alentz Chin stated, by optimizing heating system design and incorporating intelligent control technologies, we can significantly improve heating efficiency and reduce energy consumption. Dr. Ravi Ramamurthy added, educational institutions play a crucial role in spreading sustainable practices. We must educate more people about sustainable development and encourage participation. Gary Yu, founder of the Boston Urban Forum, stated, Boston Urban Forum is dedicated to becoming a pivotal platform for promoting sustainable development in cities and communities. By bringing together experts and innovative ideas from various fields, we aim to drive positive change and collaboratively create a greener and more inclusive future for our cities and communities. This forum not only provided valuable knowledge and experience sharing for the participants, but also pointed the way forward for the sustainable development of cities and communities. We look forward to more similar forums in the future, contributing wisdom and strength to Boston's sustainable development. So Planck Energies is one of the young clean tech companies okay, in, in Boston. So it was founded about two years ago. So, do we, so what do we do? Okay, we developed and commercialized the cool roof paint for infrastructure and for vehicles. So how does okay, our technology contribute okay, to the low carbon or carbon neutral, uh, neutralized technology? So we still use our cooling paint, actually, you, know, you do not actually have to consume any electricity to achieve the same cooling performance. So our goal is to achieve the sustainable cooling without cons consumption of any other type of energy. And eventually to lower your electricity bill and also okay, to lower okay, the carbon emission okay, to, okay, to the earth. So this technology is also named the passive cooling technology. Passive means versus active. So how do we achieve active cooling? Okay, with the use of air conditioners, HVAC systems. Passive cooling means actually, no, we do not use air conditioners. We could still achieve cooling. Okay, for okay, the dwellings, houses, infrastructures, warehouses, and data centers. Thanks. I don't, there is a very common, but also I could say that a very uh, effective strategy of using the floor heating system. So it's basically uh, the thermal mass. The concrete is a kind of thermal mass that can hold and store the energy for a longer period of time. So like especially in Boston, during the winter time, we require lots of heating because of extreme weathers. So besides the passive design of having better insulation of the buildings or the better uh, window materials, the glass materials, we could probably consider using this um, thermal mass that actually is just like supply the hot water to the coil pipe. The coil pipe is actually underneath the concrete floor. So the concrete floor will be heated up. 
in a, and store the energy inside. So the buildings will keep it warm with less requirement of the heating from the radiator or from the heat pump. And that's kind of matter that integrate both systems together, we can save a lot of heating energy and, and increase the coefficient of performance for the HVAC systems in the winter season. A, a couple challenges, and some of them we touched on today, um, you know, just with buildings, there's so many decision makers. The city of Boston, I think, has over 86,000 buildings, and there's just so, there's so many different owners and decision makers, tenants that you have to consider when you want to make a change. You know, you have to bring a lot of people on, and so that's a challenge we think about at Mass CEC a lot of how to bring homeowners on, uh, building owners, but also building professionals. Um, and that relates also to a workforce challenge. So uh, I mentioned that Mass CEC is doing a lot of workforce training and we want to make sure that as the city has these ambitious climate goals, there's a workforce that's trained to meet them. Uh, and we're also thinking about sort of bringing folks into that workforce who might have not had uh, access to clean energy jobs before. So we're really focused on uh, equitable workforce development. Um, we talked today about how Boston's buildings are, are old, some of the oldest in the country, and so um, you know some of them starting conditions are, are poorly insulated, um, old mechanical systems, um, and so that's a, a challenge, but also an opportunity that you know maybe as. You know, unfortunately, we're looking to add more cooling to buildings. You can also make the switch to heat pumps for heating, and that's a way to electrify and, and, and eliminate uh, a major use of fossil fuels in buildings. Um, so yeah, I think that's a lot of decision makers, old buildings, um, workforce that needs to get trained. Um, you know, and, uh, and then I think we also talked about just figuring out uh, cost-effective ways to make this transition. You know, it's any change we, we want to uh, minimize the cost as much as possible and think about uh, really cost-effective ways that make this accessible to to uh, homeowners and renters uh, across the city. The thing is, we talked a little bit during the panel um, about how things like the urban heat island effect um, affect places as far north as Boston, um, even though we're used to cool temperatures up here for most of the year. But uh, the technology, honestly, is is perfect for scaling globally um, because it's it's far more effective in regions that are hotter, uh, more humid climates that are, say, need cooling year round. Um, so the, the global scaling is something that we've had in mind, um, something that's, that's really the long-term strategy uh, for the technology just because it's it's so much more effective in other regions climate wise um, but the other side of that too is that um, we talked again at the panel a lot about uh, passive technologies um, those are going to play such a big role in, in chopping down people's energy costs um, and globally we're very fortunate in the US um, that we have uh, a lot more resources and infrastructure uh, but in other parts of the world they're um, they have significantly less infrastructure and financial resources. So technologies like ours that uh, can give you cooling or at least help you cool without requiring any electricity consumption, just a one time put it on your roof and you can forget about it for 10 to 20 years, um, that's I think is why it has so much global potential. Not just because of the climate compatibility, uh, but also because of compatibility with the, uh, the infrastructure and the socio-economic constraints of those regions. Well, I think uh, universities have a big role in that. I think that we try to do that with our students. Uh, we also try to influence uh, the thinking of managers because you know they have much bigger impact and policy makers. So those are the three uh, groups that we try to target. In my, we have a center for emerging markets where we're trying to say to managers, to students, to policy makers, please realize there's a whole wide world out there it's not the U.S., the world does not end with the U.S. And how can we create this global mindset? Because there are, this is a global problem, ideally should have a global solution. And we cannot afford to each come up with our own solutions. We have to pool our ideas and make it work as a, as a community across the world. And I think that's the message we try to provide through our center.